Yes, um, thanks, Christine. Um, so as Christine mentioned, we're gonna move on to the next portion of our um, program, which are our fellows um, for 2021. So the Prime Fellowship Program has been our flagship program since 2019. Over the last uh, three years, we've been fortunate enough to have some excellent scholars of which we've funded for a year each. And through our program, which really um, is built for fostering collaboration across disciplines, we've invested in trainees and then helped them with subsequent research funding. And this program then has seen about a five and a half time return on investment um, with the money we've put into these exceptional fellows. And so coming up, you will get presentations, just really high overviews um, of our 2021 fellow programs, uh, projects. And we will start actually with um, a video because one of our fellows is in China right now and the time difference makes it a little bit hard for her. And then we will proceed with the rest of them back to back in lightning talks. So thanks very much. Title is multi-omics analysis of muscle stem cell induced muscle disease. My supervisor are Professor Aaron Wheeler and Professor Penny Gilbert. Nowadays, effective treatments for some muscle-related disease are severely lacking. Fortunately, several recent studies suggest that compromised link complex function is a critical step in muscle disease. And the Gilbert lab found evidence that muscle stem cell dysfunction may also contribute to this disease. So fully studying the function of the link complex in muscle stem cell is likely to help us find the mechanism of this disease and find a suitable treatment. However, muscle stem cells are quite rare. It's hard to screen them from abundant muscle fibers and the in-inch property make it even harder. Moreover, the RNA and the protein content in a single cell is very low, which makes the extraction very difficult and make it easy to be absorbed and lost during the transfer process. Therefore, to meet these challenges, we build a multidiscipline team. My research focuses on mass spectrometry-based multi-omics. Professor Wheeler is good at microfluidics and single cell analysis. Professor Gilbert is an expert in biomedical engineering and muscle biology. And we aim to use the DISCO system to establish a transcriptome and proteome sample preparation pipeline. Then applying this pipeline to evaluate the MRI and the protein level changes and to explore the expression regulation mode or mechanism of the link complex. Finally, the differentially expressed MRA and the protein associated with the link complex will be found, and they may be the potential biomarkers or drug targets. All right, so hi, my name is Emily Gilbert, and my prime research focuses on novel approaches to modulate neuroinflammation in a preclinical model of MS. My supervisors for this project are Dr. Cindy Morsehead in the Department of Surgery and Dr. Molly Shoikit in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Applied Chemistry. Next slide. So my work seeks to modulate the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. Clinically, multiple sclerosis or MS leads to progressive deficits with movement and also cognitive function. On the cellular level, the hallmark features of MS are demyelination, 
This causes impairments in signal transduction throughout the central nervous system, as shown here on the left. And one of the key players in the development and progression of MS are microglia. These are the immune cells of the central nervous system, and they have the ability to shift into different functional states and can release both pro and anti-inflammatory cytokines. And so our hypothesis is that modulating this microglia response in MS is sufficient to promote remyelination and improve functional outcomes. Next slide. And one of the most exciting components of this project involves the development of a novel targeted approach to alter the inflammatory response of these microglia in the spinal cord. So here we aim to develop and optimize the delivery of the immunomodulatory compound pituitary adenylate cyclase activating peptide or PACAP in a nanoparticle hydrogel complex developed by the Schuykit lab to drive local sustained delivery of this peptide within the cord. And then with the expertise from the Morsehead lab, we aim to explore the effect of this drug delivery on myelination, neural precursor cell populations, and also functional outcomes in a preclinical model of MS. Next slide. And so the outcomes and significance of this work include providing new information on the cellular mechanisms that contribute to the progression of this disease. This study also drives the development of a novel anti-inflammatory anti peptide for improving outcomes for individuals with MS and ultimately serves as an optimization of a targeted drug delivery approach that could then be applied to a range of demyelinating diseases within the central nervous system. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chen. Uh, my fellowship project title is Miniaturized RT-NAMP Paper Pre Device for COVID-19 Diagnosis. My supervisors are Professor Xin Yu Liu from Mechanical and Professor Kiss Party from Pharmacy. Next, please. During the pandemic, early detection of the virus RNA is the key to control the pandemic, pandemic spreading. The golden standard method, RT-PCR, although highly accurate, is not suitable for the low resource settings, such as airport, border checkpoint, and rural hospitals. So to address these point of need condition screening requirements, a diagnostic solution that is simple, rapid, and easy to read is required. Next, please. So Party Group has successfully developed an isothermal amplification technique, RTNAMP, to target COVID N and S gene amplification within 30 to 60 minutes. The successful amplification process can be simultaneously visualized with sensitive pH indication dye. Next, please. So here in this project, we are trying to note the calorimetric RTNAMP amplification onto a wax printed paper chip. The paper chip is alternative to the multi-well plates. It's low cost and it is possible. We will also develop a portable miniaturized incubation system that comes with an electrical control or the thermal control for the heat supply. Next, please. So to summarize, in this project, we are going to deliver a miniaturized COVID-19 rapid virus detection system that comes with a low-cost wax-printed paper chips for, uh, for the calorimetric RTNAP amplification. We will also demonstrate the device on-site detection capability with patient samples. And in the end, we will extend the paper device to the other scenarios like food safety. Here, I want to specially thank Justin and Pavan from Party Lab for great help during the project. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, hello, my name is Dustin, and my uh, work is on optimization of tri-substitute indizoles as antifungals. 
and I am under the co-supervision of Professor Leah Cowan from the Department of Molecular Genetics and Professor Robert Beatty from the Department of Chemistry. Next slide, please. Antifungal resistance is a global health crisis. We've heard much of the antimicrobial crisis uh, where a lot of uh, microbes are becoming resistant to our medications, but this, a parallel crisis is happening with fungal infections. There are currently only three major classes of antifungals and each of them target the fungal cell wall. Therefore, it's imperative to develop new uh, classes of antifungals that can target different, uh, have different molecular targets and re hopefully reduce the uh, spread of resistance. Next slide, please. A few years ago, indazoles were found to inhibit the electron transport chain. And this is a new class of uh, antifungal compound and it's pro it possesses promising activity. The current lead, as you see in the bottom corner, is called INZ5 and is potent, selective, and non-toxic. Although, unfortunately, it is unstable. And this is where my project really comes into play. Next slide, please. I'm going to be uh, working both within chemistry and biology departments to develop new indazoles, which uh, requires this multidisciplinary uh, collaboration. Under this uh, regime, I will be uh, designing new drugs, performing synthesis, max, max mass spectrometry, and metabolic profiling to make sure they're stable, and also performing antifungal testing, protein inhibition, mitochondrial inhibition, and co-cultures to make sure there's selectivity and on-target activity. So the desired outcomes ultimately will be on potency, non-toxicity to mammalian cells, selectivity, stability, and by the end of this time, uh, have one or two compounds ready to submit to animal testing. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Chudu Radu and I've been working with Professor Patrick Gunning and Professor Scott Prosser to develop a treatment for fibrolamellar carcinoma. So this is a rare disease that mainly affects young adults and currently there's no treatment beyond liver resection. So removing that portion of the patient's liver. All of these patients, however, have a consistent 400 kilobase deletion. Uh, that codes for the fusion protein that you see there in the middle. Uh, the orange protein is protein kinase A. That's what our wild type protein looks like. And in these patients, they have that green tail appended to it. And so because selectivity was really important to us, we decided to target a selective allosteric site that's present only on the mutant protein and not on the wild type. So if we could go to the next slide, uh, we performed a fragment screen first in silico, and then we validated our top hits both, uh, so in vitro for both inhibition and selectivity uh, against this mutant kinase, JPRK. We then took that hit compound and we performed an SAR on it uh, to show that we maintained our selectivity and improved our potency. So in the middle there, you can see we went through a kinome screen. Uh, and we also showed that in cells, we can kill the cancerous FLC cells. Those are the ones in red there. Um, and we don't touch healthy liver cells. Uh, furthermore, with the help of Scott Prosser, we were able to show that we bind to this oncogenic kinase allosterically, uh, as we initially predicted. Uh, and so going forward, if we go to the next slide, uh, now that we have a crystal structure, um, we plan on expanding on our SAR in a more directional manner. Um, we also plan on doing 2D NMR studies, which should show us exactly how our ligands affect the protein allosterically. And finally, we plan on doing uh, mouse studies to test both the toxicity and the pharmacokinetics of our drugs before moving on to preclinical trials. Thank you. 
Um, hello, everyone. Uh, can anyone see me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Rick, and today I'm excited to talk about my project regarding on the use of a hardener chip system to model myocarditis. Before I begin, I'd like to first thank all the principal investigator that already is involved in this project. Next slide, please. Myocarditis is the inflammation of the heart muscle, which ultimately leads to heart failure if left untreated. While COVID-19 pandemic has sparked the uh, study of myocarditis, given its prevalence among the COVID-19 patients, the difficulties in establishing a proper diagnosis limited to conduct a large-scale clinical trial to evaluate the potential therapies, including immunosuppressant drugs. So the drawing pipeline of the development for the immunosuppressant medication is mostly attributed to lack of physiologically relevant in vitro model that allow the synergistic integration of the immune cells in the pre-existing system. And this hinders the exploration of the drugs targeting the immune component. Next slide, please. So to address these limitations, we recently introduced a new hardware chip micro device called the Invade system. This new platform enables us to construct a perfusible vascular channel that also supports a culture of the three-dimensional functional cardiac tissues in the 96-fold format. By strategically incorporating a circulating immune cells in the system, we were able to decode the role of the immune cells associated with the heart failure and understand the crosstalk between the immune cells and the cardiac tissues. Next slide, please. So having a myocarditis on a chip model will greatly enable us to screen the possible therapeutics. Combining the analytical um, quantification approach coupled with no invest monitoring of the cardiac tissue, we'll be able to identify key molecular pathways that lead to the myocarditis. Ultimately, we would like to use this model as a drug screening testbed to systematically investigate a novel immunosuppressant compound and provide a fast track approach to translate preclinical drugs into the clinical stages. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ingrid. I'm a PhD student in the Staglier lab, and I study KRAS. Uh, KRAS is a molecule that's uh, at the center of cell signaling pathways. When a cell receives a signal on its surface, the cell surface receptor is transduced the signal to KRAS, which then propagates it forward to many cellular uh, signaling pathways. These leads to phenotypes such as cell growth, proliferation, survival, and so on. KRAS mutations are a big problem. There are known drivers of lung colorectal and pancreatic cancers, which are three of the four most lethal cancers in North America. Uh, except for one mutation, KRAS uh, so far remains largely undruggable. Next slide, please. So my project aims to use three technologies, MAMFDS, SimpleDS, and artificial intelligence to identify inhibitors of KRAS G12D. Next slide, please. KRAS has been difficult to target for three main reasons. Uh, first, it's a small, smooth protein that lacks deep binding pockets. It has picomolar affinity to GTP, which is difficult to outcompete. And its uh, behavior depends on its interaction with the plasma membrane, and this is difficult to mimic. Because of these challenges, we're taking a new radical approach to trying to target uh, KRAS. In collaboration with Cyclica, we are performing a virtual screen of 1.3 billion compounds to identify uh, molecules that may bind KRAS. We're testing selected compounds using MAMFDS and SimpleDS, which are assays developed by the Staglier lab. These assays are performed in living cells, so KRAS can be in its native environment. Selected hits will then undergo functional validation under guidance for, from Dr. O uh, using cancer panel cells, cell lines, and uh, signaling assays. The ultimate goal is to identify at least one KRAS targeting inhibitor for preclinical and clinical studies. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Wendy. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the CHO lab. And for this project, we'll be collaborating with the Allen lab in order to develop a DNA nano device for enhanced immune targeting of cancer. Next, please. Um, so immunotherapies are a form of cancer therapy which is aimed to teach immune cells to better recognize and better kill foreign cancer cells. 
Unfortunately, though, uh, the current efficacy of immunotherapies are still quite low for the majority of patients. One reason for this, as we've heard, is because cancer is obviously a very complex disease, and so we require uh, multiple components and tools for targeting uh, cancer in order to engage a strong enough immune response. Next slide, please. So that's exactly what we aim to do with this project, making use of our expertise in DNA nanotechnology. What I mean by DNA nanotechnology is that through the um, smart design of DNA sequences, we can generate nanoscale structures, which are created completely out of DNA and folded into any shape that we would like. Uh, for example, the letters and characters which are shown on the slide. In addition to their flexibility and shape, uh, DNA nano devices are also ideal drug delivery carriers. And that's because we can additionally attach biomolecules or drugs or antibodies onto them while still maintaining full control over the number, the density, and the combination of drugs we're loading onto each to ensure that they enter the same cell. Next slide, please. Um, so then keeping all of this in mind, uh, for this project, we'll be developing a new form of DNA-based nano device, which will carry multiple immunotherapeutic adjuvants with proven clinical efficacy to ask whether combinatorial delivery may further enhance disease outcomes. Additionally, we'll also target our nano devices only to our cells of interest, which are tumor-associated macrophages. The outcome of this project will be a new form of an immunotherapeutic device, which will offer additional programmability on the path towards precision medicine. Thank you for listening. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mila, and I'm excited to share with you our prime project that combines the expertise of Professor Allison McGuckin and Professor Cheryl Aerosmith. Um, next slide, please. Um, so pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, or PDAC, remains one of the most malignant tumors with a five-year survival rate of less than 10%, uh, with a high possibility of disease regrowth. PDAC tumors are recognized for their complex tumor microenvironments, including the immune cell population, the tumor-associated macrophages, or TAMs. So TAMs can be broadly uh, divided into the anti-tumorgenic or the pro-tumorgenic subtype, where polarization can occur through epigenetic regulations. Specifically in PDAC, macrophages are activated towards this tumor-promoting phenotype, which has been shown to be associated with faster disease regrowth and poorer prognosis. Although reprogramming towards the anti-tumorgenic subtype has been attempted, it's been, it's been without significant success, particularly due to the lack of um, representative human models and relevant assays. Uh, next slide, please. So therefore, the objective of our project is to identify epigenetic regulators of TAMs that modulate the TAM-enhanced PDAC regrowth after treatment in a representative human disease model. The McGuigan Lab has developed a 3D in vitro cell, uh, cell culture technology that generates thin meniscus-free microgels to facilitate image-based analysis for the continuous monitoring of cell regrowth after treatment in a 96-well throughput. Using this technology, we will establish human patient-derived organoid and macrophage co-cultures and validate this accelerated tumor regrowth. We will then use our regrowth model to perform a screen using an epigenetic regulator compound library and assess PDAC regrowth. Next slide, please. In particular, we're looking for an epigenetic compound that's able to inhibit this TAM-enhanced regrowth. The potential impact is the identification of human TAM targets that block this pro-tumorgenic function and that will have clinical significance. Thanks for listening. Hi everyone, um, I'm happy to give an overview of my project, which is the collaboration between Dr. Alan Cochrane and uh, Dr. Valet Huli on discovery of broad spectrum anti coronavirus therapeutics. Next. Um, over the last 20 years, the coronaviruses have caused a substantial mortality and morbidity, and there are studies that suggesting that there is still a large reservoir of related coronaviruses that can still cause potential pandemics in the future. Uh, next, please. Uh, current compounds target viral proteins. However, coronaviruses mutate fast, and as a result, the compounds may lose efficacy against them. An alternative approach is to 
um, rely on the fact that coronaviruses utilize many cellular functions for their replication. And these functions are shared by many coronaviruses. So instead of, uh, next please, um, targeting each coronavirus individually, we can develop compounds that can target them all. And next please. To identify such compounds, uh, we screened a large library of 1,500 compounds, and the ones that weren't toxic against the cells were tested against an alpha coronavirus. Effective compounds were next tested against um, a beta coronavirus, and the hits were then tested against the SARS-CoV-2 itself. And right now we have seven compounds. Um, as you can see by the dose response curves in red, they um, significantly reduced uh, virus load in the context of all coronaviruses that are tested um, without affecting um, uh, the cells. Um, so right now we are in the process of uh, studying their mechanism of action. Next. Uh, next, please. Um, and we would like to study them in models that better mimic human tissues, such as air liquid interface cultures of human primary airway epithelial cells in collaboration with Dr. Theo Moraes at UFD. And uh, preliminary results suggest that these compounds are effective against SARS-CoV-2 in these models. We would also like to study them in brain and lung organoids, and this work is in collaboration with Dr. Liliana Atisano at UFD. Thank you.